Okay, so what's your name? My name is Summer. I can't hear you. Wait a minute. It is so loud out there. Summer. Like the season? Summer. Summer. Mm -hmm. Hi, Summer. Yeah. You have beautiful blue eyes. Thank you. But that's not what we're here for now. <laughs> we're here for about this stuff. Yeah. Why are you here? Well, I think most people are here for the same reason. Um, I've actually seen some repercussions in other ways that maybe a lot of people aren't aware of. For example, um, all, a, a lot of people are staying home from working and that includes park rangers and um, people who are scientists. They preserve the land and we've actually had um, poachers um, in undeveloped countries taking um, taking advantage of this situation and destroying our oceans and as a surfer this is something I can't stand for. We need to put people back to work because it's not just people who are hair, hairdressers or gym owners. And these people are very important but I think there's other repercussions that people are not thinking about. This is having not only economic collapse, but also environmental collapse, and we need to stand up for that. So, what do we do with these politicians? They're not representing us. I don't know. I'm not a politician. <laughs> what should we do? Um, I mean, this is, I think this is great what we're doing right now. We need to keep doing this. We need to keep putting the pressure on politicians to stand up for the people. They need to stand up for us, and it doesn't feel like that right now. I've always been a big believer in that people have our backs, you know, especially in a country like the United States. I thought that, well, politicians have our best interests at heart, and I have become very pessimistic to that fact recently. Well, let me ask you a question. Is there a clause in the Constitution that when you have a national emergency, it can be uh, uh, suspended? No, there's no clause like that. <laughs> No nope. Like <laughs> we have the right to assemble. We have the right for freedom of speech and pursuit of happiness. Um, yeah, so no clauses uh, to so, suspend our rights in a time of disaster. So no constitution, no America. No. Right? That's right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. check. I don't qualify for that either. What are we supposed to fight for? We're fighting for our lives here. There's people dying. I worked for a company for 10 years putting young adults and teenagers in programs for suicide, sex trafficking, and no one's talking about kids getting molested. My daughter was molested for eight years. The only grace she had was when she was able to go to school or church. Our church can't even help these people. People are have alcohol abuse, they're suffering. No one knows what's going on in these homes because we're isolating people. God did not intend for us to be isolated. We have got to get back to work. I'm sorry for the people that are sick and dying, the, the, the elderly, the immune compromised. Stay home, we will fight for your rights. Thank you very much.
I'm Brian Melanakis. I'm the chairman of North County Conservatives. We have 935 members, and some of us are here today advocating for our First Amendment rights. I encourage every single American, if you have not read the First Amendment in some time, read it. It includes freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, which is what we're doing right here, freedom of assembly, shall not be abridged. That means not cut down in any way by the government. It is clause in the Constitution that when there's a national emergency, they can uh, uh, temporarily suspend no. the Constitution. No, there's nothing in the Constitution about that. Absolutely not. Yeah, uh, generally, not generally, always, burying or or ignoring the U.S. Constitution just is not a good idea. It's a really bad idea. I came across. I'm just going to mention one other thing. I came across an interesting historical article today going back to the time of Woodstock, which some people were around at the time of Woodstock, many were not. That was 1969. There was something else that happened in 1969 that I don't think I was even aware of at that time, besides the Vietnam War, besides the year we landed on the moon. There was also the Hong Kong flu. And guess what the Hong Kong flu did in 1969? It killed 100,000 Americans. Now that's bad. And it's bad every single life that's been lost this year. But what happened in 1969? Did, by the way, they didn't cancel Woodstock. They didn't cancel church. They didn't put hundreds of thousands of small businesses out of business. They didn't ignore every other disease except that one virus. And the country lived through it, and we don't even remember it. So there's bad things going on right now, and it's not just the virus. The virus is the least of the bad things going on right now. So who's benefiting from this? Thank you very much. Who's benefiting from this? Well, certainly people that want more, ever more powerful government, mandate government, government that is not subject to the whim of the people, I shouldn't say the whim of the people, to the approval of the people, it's everything's outside normal process. All these controls have been put on outside of any court, outside of any legislature, outside of any vote, and this is what you get. And if people passively accept this, I fear for our future. Hi, can I ask you your first name? Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Now, uh, why are you out here? Because this is an illegal overstep by our government that has never happened before, and it is there's no rationale for it. It's against the Emergency Act that says it has to be a declared emergency and that it should be ended as soon as possible. Uh, there are so many Ill irregularities. This is against our constitutional rights, and it's against the science that shows that this is this. You know, same kind of danger as a seasonal flu would would uh, a little bit of noise out would here. create. So I'm an RN, and I've I've oh, looked into you the know a little bit about this. Well, yeah, and I've talked to thousands. Well, not thousands, but I've talked to a number of other health professionals that doubt the science on this, and that's why I'm saying investigate Fauci and the CDC that is corrupt. That, Let me that, ask you a question. Didn't Fauci uh, fund the Wuhan laboratory? Well, that is the report by credible sources. Yes, it is. Yeah, so, and is so that for sure or is that just a rumor? Well, it's by eyewitnesses and it's by a, there's a record of an illegal patent that he took out against the government. I mean, that's what people are, that's what the several, yes. Uh, but I don't know all about that. I know about the science that I've been taught as a nurse. And, and for, all you have to do is look at this order that was, this, it was, you know, the Surgeon General said on March 31st that it's harmful to wear masks. That it, and I know that from medicine. You don't wear masks. Yeah, breathe. it impairs your breathing. It causes you to breathe, breathe your own carbon dioxide. You create a an environment for the incubation of germs inside the mask. Uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't wear a Kleenex on your, you know, you reuse the same Kleenex all the time. We were trained 
that you need to change your mask frequently and you only wear it if you're in contact with an infected patient and so for people to be ordered to wear masks for long periods of time uh, is harmful. Do you know that I took the bus and they would not take any money? Well, that's because Gates and his billionaire good club, and you can, you can Google that, want to have a cashless society. They want to have it all digital so then they can control all our money. And we, we can't even exchange goods or services without going through their, them and their electronics. That's why. So, yeah, uh, they're trying to do all the things that they wanted to do, be, taking advantage of this manufactured uh, epidemic, which I think is not even valid. So, yeah. So let me ask you this. You already uh, partially answered the question. So who's benefiting by this uh, biological warfare? The people that are benefiting are the multi, the multi mega rich, the Rockefeller Foundation, the Gates Foundation, the uh, the plutocrats, the Bloomberg's, the owners of Walmart. I mean, it's, you look up all the people that are benefiting. It's the multi billionaires. And they have they they control a lot of our government institutions by quote donating to them. There's a there's definitely a partnership between Gates and the NIH. You can look that up online. Uh, they decided that this was going to be the decade of the vaccines, and yeah, they're making big money on on pharma products on vaccines. No, isn't, isn't and. Gates Gates interested in uh, the overpopulation problem on Earth? Oh, yeah, he wants to control the population in every way he can. So isn't this working? Yeah, this is, this is to the, and this, this goes beyond Democrats and Republicans. This goes, this is the super elitist versus the rest of the people. That's what it is. And what are we going to do about it? I don't know, except stand up about it. You know, don't take it. Don't get a vaccine. That's what I say. Look at Robert F. Robert don't get Kennedy. The vaccine, they're gonna force us. Hey, don't just don't get it. Look, if go. You don't to, have the mark of the beast. You won't be able to be part of society. Uh, not if thousands of people, hundreds of people refuse. And uh, look at why we should refuse. Look at what Robert Kennedy Jr. has been saying for years about the corruption of the CDC, about the corruption of these vaccines they're not they used to be safe but ever since they changed the law in 1989 there's it's very very doubtful and no one can be sued if you get a vaccine injury they're not liable the big pharma companies and the big cdc who can sue them so yeah it it uh it is corrupt and we need to stand up as a country as a people and and Stop this. So, COVID-19 is a, another expression of the, the uh, New World Order's tightening the cinch around the uh, neck of freedom of the people in the United States in that it talks about taking away our rights and our abilities to assemble and for free speech. And also I've been hearing about a new, a new Patriot Bill. It's called the Bioterrorist Patriot Bill or something like that. Yeah supposedly coming out of Trump's office, I don't know. And if that's coming down, you know damn well that, um, that uh, you know, this, this whole event has been staged and it's all about a bigger picture and a bigger, um, a bigger agenda. And the, the, uh, the way you can tell that. I want to tell you something about this big agenda. When I went on the bus to pay, they would not take lawful United States okay, right, money okay. anymore. Let me, let me talk. So let's let's talk about the the money thing as being a a dirty a dirty uh, element in our society that we need to get rid of. Well, actually, I took a bag around the other day and tried to get people to donate some of that dirty money, but they, nobody wanted to give it to me. So that's a good sign. But that's just another way, a, another uh, avenue in which they're going to take away our liberties and our freedoms is to take away the money. When we people don't really realize. 
the disadvantage that we will be under uh, when the ability to transact will be taken away directly without the government's intervention. <clears throat> It'll take away a freedom that we seldom even acknowledge because we don't think about it. It's something we've grown up with. At least those of us who are, um, are now seniors and, and a lot of other younger people too. So any anyway, young person. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a very subtle thing, but it's a very inclusive thing. And it doesn't, it, it, I mean, let me see, what else, can I, what else are they taking away? Um, well, certainly we know the, the ability to gather in more a few people uh, is being taken away. <clears throat> But it's going to set a precedent along, along with taking the, literally the freedoms that we have. Uh, they'll, once people get used to the shock of not being able to come out of their house, not being able to assemble, uh, you know, hopefully not the currency will go. But these kinds of things will slowly chip away at, at the reality that we once knew. And, um, and so it will be, it, it'll, and when 5G comes in, I believe when 5G comes in, that's really going to, that's really when they're going to run this scam again on us, and they're going to make it make it for real. This is kind of a trial run, I think. <clears throat> the test the uh, reactions that people have in general about the sequestration and the loss of freedom. So <clears throat> I'm getting kind of hoarse right now, so I think I'm going to have to stop talking. But we're having a great time down here, down on Broad Street in front of the Hall of Injustice. Thank you very much for listening. My name is Madeline. Madeline. And uh, can you uh, talk to us about why you're down here? What's your story with this pandemic stuff? Sure. So I'm here with my family today, my husband and my two children. And we're here. We're small business owners in San Diego County. And our business has been dramatically affected. Um, our sales are down 50%. We've had to lay off staff. Uh, recently this week, we just decided to open up our business anyway. We told all of our staff they're welcome to come back. We'll find a way to pay them. Um, some staff are choosing not to come back. They say they're comfortable at home on unemployment. And some people are legitimately scared of COVID. I get it. It is, you know, a real well, virus. Are you scared of it? No. Um, myself, myself and my family, we don't fall into the elderly, sickly demographic. So I'm personally not scared. I think that people who are scared, um, you know, they're welcome to self-quarantine. People that want to wear masks, that's their right to do so. Um, but I also think that people that don't want to wear masks every time they leave their house are also, um, you know, it's, the, it's their right not to do so. I think it should be a personal choice. Well, isn't there a clause in the Constitution that says you can, you can suspend the Constitution in national emergency? Listen, I'm not going to claim to be an expert on the law or the Constitution or interpreting it. There are many more educated people on that than myself, and I'm not claiming to be one of them. I'm not an expert. Um, but I do think that forcing people to wear something to go outside and leave their home, um, if it's not in violation of the Constitution, I know that's in debate right now, but I think it, that it should be. I don't think people should be required to wear anything other than, you know, basic basic, you know, coverings for the sake of decency to leave their homes. Did you know that they don't take cash on the buses anymore? I did not know that. Um, I know that it's now being required to wear masks on public transportation. Um, I just think it's, I think it's fascinating how much the media, how much politicians, how much um, health authorities have flip-flopped on the, on the mask issue in particular. And I think it's surprising that there's little research to back it up. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Um, sure, you're editing this, right? Okay, so I, I do, I'm also, I'm, I'm angry about the double standard that's going on right now. Big companies are allowed to stay open. Very small retailers are being forced to stay closed. For example, clothing retailers, yes, hair salons as well, furniture stores. You can go to Walmart and buy furniture, but you can't go to your local furniture retailer to buy furniture. Um, I think that it's horrible that essential workers are actually getting... Um, they're actually getting funding to send their kids to daycare, but my kid can't go to a playground, my kid can't go to a preschool, but if I was a grocery store worker, my kid would be able to play with other children all day long, but my kid has to stay at home with me and her six-month-old baby brother and can't play with other kids. That's a double standard, and it's not right, and it's not fair. Children should be able to play with each other. Children... 
children should be able to play with each other. Why are some kids allowed to go to daycare and other kids can't go to preschool? It's not right. The double standard is, is a real whammy that's affecting primarily middle class America, small business owners who are providing for themselves and creating employment opportunities. Um, this is changing, if this continues, it's changing our culture forever. I'm scared for what the future looks like. Universities are going bankrupt right now. Cities are going bankrupt. Heck, the state of California is already turning to federal money to fund unemployment. So who's benefiting from all of this? I'm not sure who's benefiting. The big companies clearly are because they're not being forced to close. People are still buying their groceries from Walmart and Target, and they're being forced to spend their money there instead of at smaller businesses. Now, Fauci, do you know much about him? I'm not going to claim to be an expert on on anything health-related, anything law-related. Isn't he the guy that's advising our president of how to handle this? That's what the media is telling me, yep. yeah. And uh, isn't he the guy who funded the Wuhan laboratory? I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna claim intimate knowledge of things like that. I'm not I'm not gonna fall into that conspiracy category. But I don't like what's going on in America right now. Even these large businesses. I was walking around here downtown with my family prior to this, and you know there's hotels. How are the hotels gonna stay in business? At what point are the large hotels gonna fold? You know, I, small business is one thing, but there's certain large events and large parts of our culture that are not going to remain if this goes on for months or years. As you know, it looks like. From what the governor's putting out, people know what restaurants can't open if nobody dies for, for two weeks. That's gonna that's gonna take a long time. That's gonna take a long time. You know what? What? Whatever side of the vaccine issue you fall on, or herd immunity issue you fall on, it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take months, maybe a year, maybe longer. You, will you take the vaccine? I don't want a vaccine. No. So you don't want that. No, I personally so will should, refuse to we take We should one. be free to refuse it and it shouldn't be mandatory. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You can't force you can't force um, health care on people. You know, there's people that die every day for their beliefs on that and you know, mainstream medical and the main I mean, you know, everyday people think, oh, that's horrible. You know, certain religious groups aren't allowing their children to be treated for diseases and things like that. Why is this any different? Well, uh, this is the, the hall of injustice, uh, c according to some people. Uh, the uh, government and uh, the media and all of the politicians and everyone who prints the money and who controls this deep state world that we've been thrust into. It's an Orwellian nightmare of a world now. And it's not going to get any better unless more than just this small handful of people uh, stand up and say, just say no, first to uh, lockdown and uh, police state, uh, martial law. This whole uh, pandemic is a, is a giant hoax. Oh, yeah? It's a communist takeover of this country by the uh, people who have been behind 9-11. They were behind all of the big uh, lies that we have been taught all our lives to believe and having gone, taken the exploration of life to its full circle, we've come back to where we began only to know the place for the first time. And that place is now the predicted Armageddon of, of, the, of, the, old, of the New Testament. Uh, we're on that road right now because the, uh, there, it's unlikely, uh, according to a lot of people, we can ever recover from the economic meltdown. That Wayne, today I got on the bus and they would not take any lawful money anymore. Oh boy. How did you get how did you get your uh they said no money, get on the bus. Oh, so they gave you a free ride? Free ride. Isn't that what, isn't that the way the communists do it? Yep. They give you a free ride. Well they think it's a free ride. Well they're gonna give everybody a free ride for six months with twelve hundred dollars a month. Of course, they're just printing that out of thin air. It's going to go on to the national debt, so the taxpayers are going to be paying for their own bailout. And, uh, of course, it's never going to be paid because it will make the $22 trillion debt $24 trillion. And it's all a big hoax. So, uh, it, But when that six months runs out and unemployment figures are up to whatever percent that they go up, be aware, aware of my sign says uh, on the back. Uh, 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 that is the national average of flu deaths in this country, and that's not, uh, and that's just normal. 
and that's not considered to be a pandemic. Well, at, at 10,000 dead in the first five months from coronavirus, according to the World Health Organization and the CDC, that would project out, since we're in the fifth month of this year, to uh, roughly double that amount, so 20,000, or maybe a little bit more with two extra months in the year, 25,000 total deaths from coronavirus. Hey, so Wayne, what should the American people do? I don't know what they should do. I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just trying to give you the facts here, that uh, with uh, no evidence at all of any epidemic uh, such as a coronavirus, the, all the flu deaths are just normal average flu deaths. Uh, this whole... What about all those people dying in Wuhan? That was from 5G radiation. They installed over 10,000. It was the first smart city uh, in China, just like Milan and, and Lombardy and uh, where, where the, where, uh, Tuscany, wherever the uh, Italian outbreaks were. They were the first 5G cities, uh, places, that where they ruled out this toxic uh, emission of uh, waves. I've been a protester against 5G. I was on the... Hey, Wayne, is there a possibility that the 5G and the virus Together. It's a possibility, but I think more the, the, the fact is that the 5G itself, uh, the, the co coronavirus, by the way, St. Saint, saint Corona is the patron saint of the Catholic Church, and, and, and it means the patron saint of epidemics, the patron saint of ec epidemic. What is the odds that they would name this virus after the patron saint of epidemics unless they had this thing all planned out from the beginning? Constitutional lockdown. It is an unlawful lockdown requiring you to wear a mask, requiring you to not go to work. All of these things are fascist measures. And it's interesting because um, the government, your governor is in control of whether or not your state opens, not the president, your governor. And um, it's coming to light uh, where the fascism and the tyranny is happening in the United States uh, as this. Um, 
as this uh, what, what I call a global out switch is taking place. There's a there's a deep state, not so obvious establishment that has us in its grips, and it is being uh, strategically dismantled. I would suggest, uh, recommend to anyone that they go to the White House website and read the executive orders since 2016 if you want to know what's really been going on, because you're not going to hear this stuff from the mainstream news outlets that are owned by the same people who want to enslave you, by the people who actually have you enslaved. And so we need to stand up now. We're running out of time, because pretty soon this is going to be illegal. Okay, so what is your name, please? Marie. Marie. And tell me, Marie, I noticed that you have an American flag. What are you up to here? What do you want to say? I would like to get our lives back. I think that people who are sick or worried should quarantine themselves and the rest of us should go back to our lives before this country goes down the toilet. These politicians are making us do, th do things against our will. They are making decisions for us that they have no constitutional right to do. Exactly, exactly. Now, aren't, now you're a lady that's up there in... Uh, I'll be 70 in August. That's all? You're young. <laughs> I'm much older. <laughs> now, aren't you afraid of getting sick from this virus? Uh, really? I'm not because if I get it, I get it. I'm pretty healthy and active, and I think I can fight it off. Now, my husband is 80 years old, and he is disabled, so I do take care of him very, very well. But as far as I'm concerned, no. If I was worried, I'd stay home. I'm not worried, and I'm not staying home. Excellent. Now, are you, do you have any of your own techniques to keep your husband healthy? Yes, I make sure that he gets uh, good nutrition, he gets hydrated. The VA sends in uh, health care workers a couple of days a week that help him do exercises. And he's been very healthy so far. Hydroxychloroquine, you know about that? Yes, I've heard about it. Uh, so you know you can always resort to that. And there's another thing you have There's a new about. one, yeah. Uh, methylene blue. Remember that one? Yes. That's another one that you can Yes, do. thank you. Oh. I said thank you. Oh, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I really think that Californians uh, ought to have a little bit more balls. USA! 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 What brought you down here? We are sick of the overreach. I understand safe distance. I understand the quarantine. It's been almost three months. We are sick of being locked down. It's an overreach. It's and tyranny. Do you think that this lockdown is American? It's not American. I, I don't recognize this country anymore. You don't recognize the country anymore. Neither do I. I if someone would have told us we're going to be locked down, we have to wear masks, we can't be close to anybody, that's not that's not where I grew up. That's not anything I recognize. It's not America. And there's no clause in the United States Constitution for its suspension for nothing, no reason whatsoever. It's a really sad state of affairs. Sorry? It's a really sad state of affairs. Very sad state of affairs. Is there anything that you want to tell the American people? We need to stand up, we need to come out, and we need to protest. We, we're not sheep. We don't have to just take it. We have our voices, and our voices need to be heard. And that's why we're here. We don't want forced vaccines. We don't want to be locked down. We don't want to wear these. Masks. We don't want to wear masks. We want to be free. This is the land of the free. And we're going to keep it that way. Okay, so uh, what's your name? Alex. Alex? Yeah. Hi, Alex. How you doing? Now, that, uh, that mask that you're wearing, that looks pretty stupid. It's extremely stupid. I hate it. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> I can't breathe with, with this thing on. Yeah, it's not good for you. It's not healthy. It recirculates your uh, CO2. Okay. So it goes back into your body again. Right. All right, so talk to me about quarantine Newsom and say something. Yeah. About what's going on. We got it. We got it. We got to start ignoring him. He's not, as far as I'm concerned, he's not the governor anymore. He's just a tyrant. 
So why are we following what a tyrant's saying? Because the police will come and uh, arrest you and fine you. Well, then the police have no authority either. What? This, this whole thing is illegal. It's unconstitutional. Who cares about... Nobody cares about the Constitution anymore. That's a problem, yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, you bet it's the problem. Yeah. If we don't have people coming to the rescue of the Constitution, forget the country. Right, it's over. Yeah. There is no country. Yeah. That, that Constitution is what makes America, America. Right. That's it. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So go on, say something else. <laughs> Who benefits from this? Who benefits? Yeah, who's benefiting from all of this? I guess the, the, the elites are. All the politicians in charge of all the power that they have. Okay, so it sounds like there's support out there for this. And maybe not may not be hundreds of people here, but out on the street with the cars, there's support for this. Yes. The American people don't want this shit. No. And that they're having to put up with it. No. So these politicians who think that they're representing us, they're not representing us. No. They're, they're supposed to be public servants. And they're acting like uh, they're public slave tyrants. masters. Public tyrants. Yeah. So what's your name? My name's Anel. Anel. Anel, and uh, why did you come down here? Uh, to protest the lockdown, to protest all the unemployment and the unreasonability of the lockdown, considering the numbers. And the, these are the numbers that you These are the about. numbers, yeah. My dad found these. Uh, this is the unemployment rate right now, compared to the level of deaths and the deaths from something like cancer. Right. So it's just completely so, unreasonable. So something, there's some monkey business going on with this virus, huh? Definitely. Yeah. Lost her career. Yeah, I, I have no more career anymore. I was I was a performing touring soloist, violinist. I I have no career. <laughs> I just want to say this is her mom. Oh, oh. mom, just stand by your daughter. Oh well, <laughs> she um she performs solo. Hold on. Oh. Uh, there's so much noise down here, we can hardly hear our first you are. <laughs> so He was asking you! No. So, this virus, what do you know about this virus? Do you know anything about it? Uh, I know it's a strain of coronavirus, of which there are many different kinds, and the strain has actually been put into flu vaccines before. Um, I know that the testing for these, are they have not been long-term tested, they're not... Uh, completely sure. There's false positives all the time, uh, so it's really kind of a hoax. W would you take a vaccine? Oh, definitely not. No way. No way. No way. You're, Never. Not, you're not afraid of getting sick? No, actually, people that are unvaccinated are often the healthiest. If you look at, I'm I'm partially vaccinated, but if I were unvaccinated, I imagine I wouldn't have had some of the problems I gave when I was younger. You were vaccinated until age five, okay, and then like, you had health no problems. Who's benefiting by all this? Um, other than Netflix, I'm not really sure. Is China benefiting? I don't think anybody is, as far as nations. Maybe Bill Gates. <laughs> Doesn't Bill Gates want to control the population of Earth? That seems what it's like at this point. Oh, isn't that what he states? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. And he, doesn't he want to get everybody vaccinated? Yes, absolutely. So won't that take care of the problem? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to add? Um, just open up the county again, open up the state, open up everything. So these politicians should not be playing doctor? No, no, not we, with my we life. You don't need any big growth. Nope, never have, never will. You know, she pointed out something that um, I, would, I didn't think about, and people her age, she pointed out something that people don't think about. People her age, like she's single, and she cannot actually even get close to the opposite sex. You know what I mean? It, 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 their whole social life is kaput, even the same sex. I mean, she can't have friends over it. It's very depressing. And she has been depressed. So, as Americans, we got to put a stop to this real fast. Yeah, right? like today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so
and what's your name? I am Cindy, and I'm helping Naomi organize the Freedom Rallies. Oh, thank you so much, Cindy. Yeah. And I see the sign that you have here. Okay, so talk to me about this whole situation. Well, we got to end the lockdown. New York just came out with statistics. 67% of their COVID cases were contracted at home. And we have to open up the businesses, the restaurants, the hair salons, the nail salons, everybody. It's like people are out of work and they need to get back to work. You know, people are tired of sitting around the house. We're being told wear a mask, stand six feet apart. And you know, back in school, I used to wonder when we studied, you know, social studies and history, the World War II and the Nazis. And I wondered how Hitler got all these people to follow him and do what he said. And now I see it happening in America. You know, but it's you, like... You're for Trump. Yes. But Trump isn't the one behind this. He wants to open up. He's actually going to go against the CDC guidelines and wants to open up sooner. Trump is surrounded in a den of vipers. Now, I don't agree. Oh, no? No. No. It depends. It depends on who you're talking about. Oh, how about Fauci from one of our Oh, no. They should fire him. But then no. you're agreeing with me. Well, but there's a whole lot of people around Trump, a lot of good people. But if you're talking specifically about the advisors for COVID, no, I do not agree with Fauci. And there's a lot more to this virus. There's a lot more to this virus than just a laboratory in Wuhan. Which Dr. Fauci, which I don't even know if he's a doctor, he actually has donated millions to this lab through a nonprofit. And so, you know, it's like, no, but now he's uh, in charge of deciding what we all do when he's the one who helped pay for it. Hi, so what's your name? My name is Chris. Chris? Yes. Hi, Chris. Hi. And um, so, why are you down here? Well, I'm down here because. Uh, Last Friday, I was walking and thought we need Martin Luther King style walks where people are educating their fellow citizens and making them take a look at the facts that are before us, the logic. <laughs> and so now I, there, there are such things and that's why I'm here today. I found out about the walk and um, so I'm here to support other people and to try to educate others, make them, you know, open their eyes. Well, hold on a second. Don't go away. Yeah. This is incredible. It is so loud down here we can hardly hear each other speak. Let's try a little bit more. Okay. So, well, that's that's the gist of it. I'm just here. I've seen two. Is there, is there anything that you want to say to the politicians and the way that they're handling this? They're handling it illogically. They're using incorrect data. They're they're cooking the books, so to speak. Um, they're I have cooking the books. Well, yeah, and I'll tell you what I mean by that is. Um, COVID cases are, you know, the, the COVID cases are, I don't know, we don't know what the numbers are. We don't know the reality. I do know that I've seen um, medical advisories telling doctors that, that a COVID death is worth more money. $40,000. So, you know, that improper models that were used, Fauci's connection to the Wuhan lab. There's just too many things that Bill Gates, the vaccines. Now, you, you said that you weren't sure if you'd have anything to say. Yeah. You just said something that is so important that people don't know. Fauci had something to do with the Wuhan laboratory. Talk exactly. More. What do you know about that? Well, I just know that he he was advised to shut down the project back in the Obama administration. Uh, the project was shut down, a mandate was put on it, and then 
in 2017, approximately, uh, during Trump's administration, the mandate was released and Fauci started it back up again. And he, and he, was, he wasn't allowed to do it in the United States No, anymore. he did it so in he China. So took it to China. Yes, he took it to China, where they're very sloppy in their labs and and he was advised by experts and other researchers not to do that. And this, this, this is only to produce a pandemic. And right. he did it. And then I've seen his I've seen his 2017 video where he predicts there's going to be a surprise pandemic. You got it. So and you yeah, I've seen him all. You wouldn't know what to say. Yeah. Huh? Well. All right. Well. You, all right. I will sign Get off. Get from uh, Santee. And I'm, I'm here. Don't, don't conceal the fact that you're involved in the 9-11 cons conspiracy investigation, what we're doing, because this is 9-11 on steroids. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, if they have their way, uh, uh, it'll be a uh, 1984 Brave New World Hunger Games situation. They want 90% of us dead. They they've said that over and over it's uh, eugenics everything they're doing all the wars are eugenics yeah. abortion is eugenics the the toxic gmo f uh, food is eugenics uh, and um, so we have to fight it you know we're the little people there's a little over seven billion of us uh, bill gates wants to vaccinate every one of us and well, he's doing that all for our own good, isn't he? Yeah, uh, yeah. He, Bill Gates went over to India and and gave the polio vaccine to a half a million kids, and they all came down with polio. He should be in prison for that alone. And then he went to uh, other countries and did the same thing. Uh, we know what their end game is. Uh, we're a lot smarter than they are. We have some really, really smart people, and uh, we have some brave doctors and researchers that are on our side and speaking out. Uh, this, what's, what's your favorite doctor out there? Uh, well, the, this researcher that actually... He, she worked for uh, Fauci, and now she's an ex exposing Fauci, and uh, so they tried to shut her down. And I, she's, I, on bit, she's on bit shoot now. Yeah, uh, um, Malovic or Maskovic, Mikovic. Like yeah. yeah, what a brave woman! It's super smart, and uh, so she's exposing Fauci and Burtz and and Bill Gates and. Uh, if there is justice in the end, they will all be hanging like Mussolini in, in, in the end. That's the way I want to see it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they have to be tried in a, in a court of law. And then well, actually, I prefer summary execution. No, or uh, uh, or Vlad the Impaler punishment. That, First they yeah, I would, uh, and put it on pay-per-view. <laughs> you made these, right? Did you make these? Well, I, uh, yeah, I, I make them. Uh, I get the pictures from uh, Costco. You know, you, you know, didn't get this from Costco. Yeah, I get the pictures. They blow them up. Oh, okay. I, I find them on the internet, and then I send them in to Costco, and, and they can make them this size or bigger. Okay. Yeah, but you know, the 5G. Uh, that, that uh, causes uh, uh, oxygen depletion. No kidding. And, and they're they're blaming they're blaming uh, COVID when it's actually five G. Yeah, there's a there's a whole lot of hanky panky that's going on with this virus and five G yeah, working they, together. Yeah, when they fire up five G all over the country, a lot of people are going to be dropping dead, and they're, they're going to label it all COVID. Yeah, and they'll say everywhere back into your houses now. It came back. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So once they get five G rolled out, yeah. then they'll be able to. Oh, they, they're all dying from COVID. <laughs> Yeah.
Okay, so Lily, uh, I, I got your name already. Um, this is a very interesting sign that you have. Tell us about it. Well, it's to bring attention to the overlords that are trying to mandate, you know, laws against us and trying to take our freedom away. You know, through the NDAA, the Patriot Act, and whatever wait, else. Wait, you're talking about 9/11. Oh, uh, we shouldn't go there. Well, well wait a minute. Isn't isn't uh, COVID-19 9/11 on steroids? That's what they say. That's what they say. So people who have forgotten about 9-11, those who forget history are condemned to repeat it. Well, pretty much. And those who don't pay attention to the rights that are being taken away every day through all these manufactured crises, um, you know, better wake up because that's when they bring in the NDAA and the Patriot Act and other, you know, forms of acts against us and legislature and bills and, uh, you know, mandated vaccines. And that's what we're not going to do. Well, isn't that Bill Gates guy? the guy who wants to control the population on earth yes he and said isn't, he, yes. isn't that a great way to do it well that's one way for sure isn't he in the middle of all this pandemic stuff pretty much when you couple GMOs and 5g and um, manufactured COVID crises and uh, viruses yeah no, there, there's a lot of different ways they're going to depopulate yeah. I think 5g is going to be the, the, I, I the most damaging that, and devastating I heard that, um, Fauci uh, went over there and funded the Wuhan uh, Biological Warfare Laboratory in Wuhan. Yeah. Is that yeah. true? That's what they're saying. I, I believe it. You know, but um, Tony Fauci's been behind PEPFAR and other uh, um, frauds. We call him Tony Fraudster Fauci, you know, with the AIDS crisis, making money with Robert Gallo and, uh, you know, downplaying Peter Duisberg's HIV and uh, Mikovits. Mikovits is doing a great job exposing Tony Fauci. And, uh, oh, you're talking about the lady? Yeah, the doctor, oh, yeah, Judy, that. Judy Mikovits. Yeah, she is. She's yeah. great. And uh, every time she puts a good video up or an interviewer um, puts a good video up, they rip it down because they know, you know, the truth is getting out there. Well, wait a minute. If um, if YouTube is taking down evidence yes. that shows a crime, now doesn't that say that YouTube is now a participant in sure. the crime? Sure, absolutely. They're very complicit. Google, Facebook, you know, and all the Instagram and all the social media sites, Twitter, you know, any, anything that's speaking the truth, they're taking it down. You know, so that's why we're out here. We need to fight against, you fight for our rights. What should you know? Americans do? Get out on the streets like we're doing now and fight for our rights. And it's not, you know, you can't really go to your politicians because politicians, politicians aren't going to do anything. It's the people that are going to push right, back you know, against it. I beg it. to disagree with you. The politicians, they're doing a lot of things, but they're not doing anything for us. You're absolutely right. But what I'm saying is we can't rely on them to fight a battle for us because they're all, you know, in the pocket, the pocket of big money. Bill Gates, you know, and uh, everyone else, uh, all these top politicians that stand up and say they're for this right or that right, they're not, you know, they, they behind closed doors, they all make deals, both sides, so. Thank you for uh, backing me up on the um, Fauci uh, uh, funding the Wuhan laboratory. Oh yeah, absolutely, but you know what? Fauci is guilty of so many things, not only stealing Mikovits's uh, paper on the XMRV virus that was causing causing CFS in women, you know, the, the, the mouse retrovirus, um, but that's so devastating to Fauci, and I'm glad that he's getting exposed for that. I hope we get rid of him real fast. Oh, I hope so too, and Dr. Burks, she's pretty guilty as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome.